Well, hey there, it's Chris Young. What do you say we take a few minutes to talk about the features and meet your brand new Heartland Pioneer BH270? Come on. Hey, what's up? It's Chris Young. Congratulations on picking up your Heartland Pioneer BH270. Let's talk about some of the features that are on this awesome bunkhouse model. We're going to start right up front with the Ram powered tongue jack. As you can see, 350 or 3,500 pound capacity on this one. It is an electric jack, but you also have a manual override. This tool will be in your pass through storage. It just goes right here. If you do not have power, not hooked up to shore, or don't have battery, and you do need to set up or hook up, Counterclockwise raises, clockwise lowers. It's pretty much the same thing for your rocker switches down here. You'll see that you got the LED light for additional safety and security. Raises the coach, lowers the coach. And when you're setting up to level your RV, what you want to do is you want to level it side to side first and then front to back. Now, right behind there is our twin 20 pound LP tanks with the cover. You'll see that we do have a regulator on these. Just make sure when you are set up that your connection is tight, it is secure. You don't want any propane leaking. And when you open these, if you have propane, the regulator should switch to green. If not, that means you don't have any propane. If you wanna check which tank has it or you use which tank you wanna use, you got this little selector switch or the supply switch. So you just switch it over to the other tank. Now I'm using this one. Now, if at any time you need to replace these tanks, just unscrew the wing nut, remove the uh, security bar, and there you go. And with your cover, try to have your cover with the tabs right here facing the coach, because there's a little lip right there that will catch air, and sometimes the wind will pop this open, you know, and that could just lead to the top popping off or maybe even the whole entire cover falling off of you. Right here on your pass-through storage, you'll see you got your tools for moving some things. This is actually the tool that we're gonna use here in a few minutes to talk about the leveling system, but finished off because you do have a hybrid aluminum profile up front, which gives you some additional security here, which is why they were able to open up the storage compartment. You also got a plastic clip right here that holds your storage doors. They are anti-slam with covered hinges. And underneath, you'll notice that we do have the Lippert PSX-1 stabilizing system on these. They are powered. You got a rocker switch here in the front, plus you got one in the back. You push to extend and then also to retract. Now, if you're, if you're putting these down to stabilize the RV and you notice only one side's going down, don't worry about it. Once that one's down, the other one will come down. But once they're down, these aren't leveling jacks, they're just stabilizing jacks. So when you hear them, the gears start grinding, you don't wanna push the button anymore. You know, that means, hey, that's, that's about all you can get. So maybe putting some pads underneath or something like that will help out. Now, with your BH270, you also have the Solera powered 12 volt awning with adjustable pitch. A couple of things about this beauty. So when you're gonna adjust the pitch, be sure you get a good secure crib to pull down and then watch out because if you have any water on top of the uh, awning, if you're on that side, it's gonna fall on you. And then, second thing, when you get done, push the awning back to the level position, mainly because you don't want it going cockeyed on you when you pull it in or messing up the frame, coming off, you know, just make sure that it's back level before you, wrote, before you bring it back in. You also have solid step over steps on your BH270. Very nice feature, not only for safety and security, but also, they just look good, I think. So lift them up to put them into the coach. You have this blue tab right here, which will secure it in. And then to bring them back down, just pull the tab out, slowly pull. And just be careful because anything heavy, you don't want to hurt yourself. Now, if you need to adjust the feet on your steps, this push tab right here releases the foot and you see the grooves. Just move it to wherever you need it. Just make sure when you are setting up that the feet are flush and stable and the plate up top is also flush because if not, you won't be able to close the door. The grab handle here doubles as a door guard. Just push up and turn. That'll keep your door safe. You also have a suburban hot water heater on your BH270. What's cool about this is it has a lot of features on it, uh, but you also need to pay attention to it. You'll see that we got a pressure release valve, manual reset, flash tube here, igniter over here, and exhaust cover here. With the 
uh, pressure release valve. It, this is to really make an air pocket on top of the water inside the tank behind the water heater. So if you come out or you see water dripping or weeping from the main uh, pressure release valve here, number one, wait for it to cool down, then get like a coffee mug or something and just drain some water out. That'll help keep it from leaking and also keep it operating properly. If you do need to manually reset your water heater, just double press right there. And because propane has more captain in it, if you have it setting for a while or if you're in a really buggy area, spiders, dirt daubers, bees, they love getting in this tube and building nests or creating blockages. You can take a pipe cleaner, easily clean that out, uh, especially if you see dust and like burn marks coming up out of the exhaust. That means there's something in there that doesn't need to be in there. So you can easily clean it out. Your anode rod is right there. That just, you know, keeps all the bad sediments out of the water. Try to replace that about once a year. You got power right here, cable connection for external right there. Freshwater fill is right here. You notice the freshwater fill always has a little air vent on it. That's so that when you're filling the tank up, it gets the, the pressure of the air out, but it's also kind of a fail safe. So if you get too much water, it's going to come spurting out. Just try to, you know, watch for that. Don't overfill it. If you do, you usually have a low point drain like we have over there that can help empty some of that fluid out. Now, the BH270 comes with double axles. You got steel rims with nitro-filled tires. And these Dexter Easy Lube axles are great. They are easy, but you need to check about once a year because the bearings might need to be repacked, uh, you know, every year. If you come out and you try to touch the wheel assembly and it's super hot, that's your red flag right there, or one of them, that you need to either call Good Sam, call Camping World, have us help you get it to the dealership. You can hit a couple of pumps of grease with the Dexter Easy Lubes, but that's mainly to get you back to the dealership. Back of your Dometic fridge freezer combo right here with the condensation tube. The back of your 30,000 Suburban furnace is right here. Just be careful since it is on the campsite. You got chairs here, and if the heater's running, the hot air and chairs may not mix very well. Black tank flush, fantastic option for your coach. Uh, just make sure, number, you know, two things. Do not use your potable water hose on the black tank. Don't need to explain that one, or better yet, don't want to. Uh, and when you do go to flush the black tank, make sure that it's open before you apply any water pressure because you don't want that backfill coming out. Steel fold-up steps leading you into the bathroom here. These are, you know, pretty much just like the name implies, they're steel fold-up steps. So just be careful when you are putting them away that, you know, you just don't hurt yourself. PSX-1 stabilizer in the back with the rocker switch works just like the one in the front. You also have the tailgate storage system on your BH270. There's a little security pin here in the bolt. Just take that out, pull the retainer pin out. This will fold down, give you some additional storage on your BH270. Get your external shower here with hot and cold. Works just like a shower. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a cord that gives you an indicator light to see that you got power, that's a great little feature. Just make sure when you plug in your 30 amp cord, you plug it in and turn and then lock it into place. If you notice there's no juice, check the jump box or excuse me, check, check the power post, make sure the breaker's on. Uh, if you still aren't getting any power, speak to the campsite about what's going on there. City water connection is located right there. Just, uh, that might be a difficult spot to put your city water since it's right under the power post, so just be careful of that. Now, with your tanks, your main terminations, you'll see we got the gray tank and the black tank there with the pull handles. When you're set up at the campsite, you don't need to leave these tanks open all the time, especially the black tank, because that solid waste can cause pyramiding. So you wanna make sure you have a little bit of water in there to make sure everything flows out well. And when you do go to dump the tanks, dump the black first and then the gray. Right here, you will see our slide. Now, this is a rack and pinion. The controls are through the frame, sturdy and solid. And right over here, the other side of our pass-through storage, but more importantly, the tool that can use it just in case you need to lower those stabilizer jacks manually because you don't have power. You'll notice there's a groove here in the tool that actually corresponds with the little heads of the peg right there just put that in you can rotate them down clockwise to lower counterclockwise to raise sometimes they can be a little ornery 
So you just want to watch out. Uh, and, and with anything, if you don't feel comfortable doing anything manually, you know, you got bad shoulders, bad back, whatever, just ask for some help. So those are some of the features on the outside of your BH270 Heartland Pioneer. Let's go take a look at what's on the inside. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, there's actually a little drive right under the stairs at the entry point that is the manual override for the slide. So just a little heads up on that. Now, when you walk into your BH270, probably the first thing you're gonna to wanna to look for are the controls for the lights, the slide, and possibly the awning. Very simple, these are your lights on and off, you slide in and out, and your awning extend and retract. Underneath your countertop is going to be your convenience center. This is where you go to see not only how the battery is doing, how the tanks are doing, but also cut on your water pump if you're not connected to city water, or cut on your water heater, you have both the gas and the electric option. If you want a quick recovery on the water, just hit both and that'll kick on your direct spark ignition. Now with your tanks, if you empty your tanks and you realize, hey, uh, I empty these things, why am I still showing two thirds or even full? Chances are there's a bead of water connected between the two sensors on the side of the tank wall. Give it a few minutes, let that water drip down. You should come back and be able to show empty. Now, if you go to run your slide and you notice the battery is showing like two thirds or even less than that, um, that means you do not have enough juice to run your slide out. We were you know, say, hey, get at least 12 volts to run the slide out. That's a good little rule of thumb. This is also the power controls for your wine guard, uh, 4G LTE Wi-Fi booster. If you get that service, which is a great little service to get, we're going to go ahead and hit the entertainment center since it's right here. You got your cable, your satellite, the little power if you need the booster as well as your 110 and your IRV Technologies AM FM Command Center. To push the power button to cut it on, you got Bluetooth, AM FM, auxiliary, as well as USB and HDMI. And right here are your volume controls. Hopefully you can hear the static right there. Got good little speakers inside of this one. Push to mute and then push and hold to power off. Over on your kitchen side, you do have a 50-50 stainless steel undermounted sink where you got hot water, cold water, and then to cut it on, you just push it off or push it out to the side. You also have the Suburban glass covered three burner cooktop. This does not only give you additional prep space, but doubles as a backsplash. Handy dandy little feature. Got the grill style grates and your controls as well as your oven. Now, if you have propane inside of your tanks and it's open, you should be able to operate this functionally. What you do is you find the burner that you want to cut on, like we're going to try this middle one right here. Push and turn until we see, push and turn until we get to the light option right here. You see how we got the little knob, make sure that's on light, and then just turn the igniter. You should see the spark. If you don't see the spark, you can lift this lid up. There are little connector wires that may get disconnected during transit that you can reconnect and that'll put your igniter back on. When you get done, make sure that's off. Same thing for your oven, except this time, you push until you see that little dot that says pilot on. Then you do the igniter and there you go. Just make sure you always cut it off. Now, if you know you got propane and it's still not working, bring it in, let our folks at Camping World and Gander take a look at it for you. Hood, you got your light and your fan, microwave, works just like a microwave does. Now for your fridge freezer combo, it is Dometic. It runs on both gas and electric with the automatic switch. But you can see you do have the option of selecting just gas. This is also cutting it off and on. Now your freezer is up here. Your refrigerator is down here. There are a couple things to note about this gas electric fridge. They are mainly to keep things cold, not to get them cold. So Rule of thumb number one, do not block this plate right here. This is what distributes the cold air to keep this fridge cool. Right here is your control slide. Just be careful because sometimes it can come disconnected from this little cable down here, but it's easy to just slide it back on. But if you want it colder, you just push it up. You also have a condensation tray right here, which does lead out to the tube on the outside of the back of this fridge. Just check that every now and then. Sometimes the tube might get blocked up and the tray will get filled up with water. That's your indication that you need to get that tube unblocked. Let's step into the Louvre. Come in here, you got the high rise plastic bowl with the foot flush. This is a Dometic bowl. And you'll notice if I can get it open, 
when you push the foot flush down just a little bit, that's when the water comes in the tank. To dump it, you just push it and hold. Uh, the flapper can sometimes wear the seal a little bit, so you can fix that by just taking some Vaseline on a glove and just rubbing the bottom of that rubber seal, and that'll keep the flapper staying in place so you don't get any leaks. You do have a vent and fan in here as well. Just twist the knob to open the vent, cut on the fan. That'll get you some alleviation of steam. Just make sure you close it. Shower, hot and cold, as well as you got your spray controller right there and your sink, hot and cold, plus your GFCI outlet right there. Your BH270 also has double over double bunks uh, with the Teddy Bear Series mattress. I always tell people if you can get a mattress topper, just makes it more comfortable. These are 200 pound uh, max capacity. So just be careful not to put a few kids up there. LP02 detector, your advent controls, which you know has different modes, your power, your mode, and your fan controls, as well as the temperature change. This controls your fan, your AC, and your heater as well. <clears throat> now, before we get over to the booth and the jackknife, if anything electronic inside the RV is not working, you've checked the power post, you made sure that everything's good there, you're connected, you have power, but it's still not working. Another thing to check is this fuse panel right here. Push to open it, and the fuses are smart fuses, so they have little red lights on them. If something is faulty, it'll be a red light glowing. Just replace it. You can also tell sometimes by this little handy-dandy window that'll let you know that, hey, something's wrong. And if that's still not the case, it still doesn't work, bring it in, let our folks at Camping World of Gander fix it for you. Great layout inside your BH270. You got the booth dinette and the jackknife sofa. Both of them feature plush and comfortable thick, not only padding, but great for sleeping as well because you don't have any sweat uh, stick, as I like to call it, to it. Both reduce down into a sleeper. With the booth dinette, you just take the legs out, lift it up, take the legs out. You'll see these wood slats on both sides of the booth dinette. That's where the table rests. Then you just move the cushions down and it becomes your sleeper. With your jackknife sofa, a little bit different of a setup to get that going. Always be careful pulling and pushing anything inside your RV. So for your jackknife sofa, just grab at the bottom, lift up and pull back. Now you have a sleeping surface and to put it back, you lift up. I like to grab the back and then what you do is you just kind of push a little bit and set it in place. And there's your jackknife sofa. Uh, you also have the Advent 13.5 BTU AC in this one with quick cool dumps. Uh, the quick cools are right here. That's how loud it is when you have it running. <laughs> Bob's like, and now when, so I'll close these. When you have them closed, they will go through the ducts inside the roof. Uh, these also come with a filter. Yours may or may not have filters in it. If so, they're gonna be behind these panels right here. You just push in, pull down, and that'll get you access to their uh, filters, which you can replace, I'd say every six months. So those are some of the features on your awesome Heartland Pioneer BH270. Hopefully this video helped you kind of understand how to utilize them. But if at any time we have an elite team of service people standing by to help you answer questions, you can even bring your RV in and we'll be glad to help you get anything working or show you how to do whatever you need done. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure you enjoy that RV as much as humanly possible.